I've got the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus here. And today I'm going to show you how to gain root access to the Galaxy S10 and the Galaxy S10 Plus and any other devices in the Galaxy S10 series after you have updated to the Android 11 update. So I know this device has had a bit of a rough patch when it comes to updating to Android 11. Samsung had to halt the over-the-air update, but has th since then continued, and that is why I've finally installed this update on my S10 Plus. Not only that, but Samsung has also changed something in this update that requires us to do a little something different after we root the device. And I believe that is why so many people are currently having issues with this. I've had a lot of requests for this tutorial over the past couple of weeks. And while I was waiting for the update to come in, now that it has been released and it is official and hopefully bug free, we can go ahead and proceed with this guide now. So to begin, we need to have an unlocked bootloader. It doesn't matter if it's an Exynos S10 or a Snapdragon, but you need to have an unlocked bootloader before you can proceed. If you do not have an unlocked bootloader, be sure to check the video description as I'll, I'll have a link to a previous tutorial that I've done that shows you how to unlock the bootloader for this device and all other devices in the S10 series. So not only that, but we're also going to need to download and install the Magisk Manager application. I'll be linking to this website as well, the official GitHub page. It'll be in the video description. We just need to sideload this APK. And then you need to download the Samsung firmware that matches what you are currently running on your device. So I use a program that I've done a tutorial in the past called Freya to download the latest update for this device. You can also use a program called SamFirm. There is a revised or rebooted version of that which currently works. But you can also use various websites like Sam Mobile and Updato. There are a number of different places that you can download official Samsung firmware from. Once you have downloaded that firmware onto your PC, you're going to need to extract the contents of that file just like a zip file. When you do that, you're going to be getting a number of different files they each begin with two letters. What we need to do is copy the file, it's a big file, that begins with the letters AP. And we need to copy that to our Galaxy S10. Because what we're going to do is we're going to patch that file with the required Magisk binaries, thanks to Magisk Manager. You're going to want to tap on the install button in the top section for the Magisk binaries. And then make sure that the recovery mode option stays checked. Because remember, we do not have a RAM disk on the S10 series, so recovery mode needs to stay checked. Now we're going to choose the select and patch a file option. And that's going to bring up a file browser that we're going to want to browse to and locate that AP file from that firmware. So we're just going to select that AP file and then tap the Let's Go button. And you're actually going to see what Magisk Manager is doing to this AP file, the exact files that they are that it is extracting and how it is going to be patching those files before packaging them back up 
into a firm a single firmware file for you. You're basically replacing that AP file with what is going to be named a magisk underscore patched file. So as long as you do not get any errors here and you get the all done message, make note of where it put out that magisk underscore patched file because we now we need to connect the phone back to the PC so we can copy this file back to the computer because we're going to load it into Odin. Now that that file, the magisk patched file, has been copied to our PC, we then need to boot this device into download mode. And to do that, we're going to be pressing and holding the side button as well as the volume down button. And we're going to continue holding those two buttons down until it boots up to that blue screen. And then we need to press the volume up button right here to bypass that splash screen and actually boot into download mode. If you don't have Odin installed on your computer, I'll be linking to a download for that as well. With the Galaxy S10 Plus in download mode and with the USB cable connected, you should see the word added in the log file of Odin right here. And you can go ahead and confirm that to make sure that Odin, as well as your computer, recognizes your device while you are in download mode with that COM message right there. And this is where we're going to be loading up these firmware files into Odin. So this is the Magisk patched file that we copied back to the PC. I've just stored it in the same folder as the rest of the firmware files. And we're going to be loading these individual files into Odin by clicking these buttons. So you're going to want to start by clicking the BL button right here, looking for the firmware file that begins with the letters BL, and then selecting that file and loading it into that slot. We're going to do that with the CP button as well. We're just going to press the CP button, click the CP button, and then select the firmware file that begins with CP. We're going to click the CSC button, but instead of loading the file that begins with CSC, instead we're going to load the file that begins with home underscore CSC because we're not looking to do a factory data reset. You can choose the regular CSC button if you want, or a firmware file if you want, but it will do a factory data reset on your device. And lastly, we're going to click the AP button right here. But instead of choosing the AP firmware file, we're going to be choosing the patched file that we copied back. So with Odin open, you can see we have loaded four individual files into those slots. We're leaving user data open. And we're just going to click the Start button to begin the process. Now you're going to want to make sure that the USB cable connection to your Samsung Galaxy S10 is stable. Do not unplug that cable until the phone reboots. And as long as everything goes correctly, as long as there's no errors down here, we are going to automatically reboot thanks to Odin, which is fine. Not only do we have a progress bar right here that we can watch, but there's also a progress bar on the S10 itself. 
And we're just going to be patient while Odin not only copies these firmware files to our phone, but also flashes these firmware files to the phone. We're going to be waiting and hope, hoping that we get a pass message right here to confirm that everything went successfully. And once we see that pass message, that's when the phone is going to reboot. So we got that pass message. The phone has rebooted. We're simply just going to wait. You can press the power key if you want to skip past this boot screen. We're just going to wait. And this is going to boot us back into the Android operating system. Because remember, we selected the home underscore CSC file, so it did not do a factory reset at all. And once we have booted into Android, we can just go right into Magisk Manager. And we can see... We have the latest version of Magisk, and then the version that's currently installed. And like always, we can even go into the Play Store and search for the infamous Root Checker application. Install and run, or install and open. just so that we can verify that we have root access. Now I was actually very surprised that whenever it rebooted on its own, it booted into and loaded Magisk as it should. Because if you have used the S10 with Magisk in the past, you know you need to hold down a button combination while the phone is turned off in order to load Magisk during boot. That requirement is still actually in place with Android 11 on the Samsung Galaxy S10, the Galaxy S10 Plus, the Galaxy S10e, and the Galaxy S10 Lite. You still need to hold the power side button and volume up buttons during boot while the phone is turned off in order to load Magisk with Android 11. However, the, uh, the added requirement, we now have to also, from what I'm reading, is at least as far as this current update right now, you're gonna have to have something plugged in to the USB port. Now from the readings that I've done on XDA forums, I highly recommend that you go through there if you have any questions on this stuff. But with the latest version of Android for the Galaxy S10 series, if you want to load Magisk, you need to have either a USB cable that's plugged in or either a you know regular USB cable for power. Um, I've, I've read that even a, um, a pair of earbuds, as long as they are USB, is good. I have not tested that. I've only tested this with my USB cable that's connected to my PC. So after you have flashed the Magisk binaries with Odin, we can load Magisk on the Galaxy S10 series by having something plugged into the USB-C port, turning the phone off,
and after the bl the screen goes black, it's usually a good idea to wait a few seconds just to make sure the actual device is off. So again, remember, we need something plugged into the USB port. We're going to be pressing the power, Bixby, and volume up buttons, pressing all of them at the same time. And we're going to count the number of screens that we see during boot. We're going to count one screen, two screen, three screen. And as soon as we see that third screen, we're going to let go of all three of these buttons. So we're pressing them down now. We're going to count. One screen, two screen, three screen. As soon as we see that third screen, we let go. And remember, we still have that USB cable plugged in. going to boot us into Android and then all we have to do is open up the Magisk Manager app to see that it is actually loading Magisk on boot now.